As long as we're talking about John Donne and the idea of metaphor and simile, we need to spend a little bit of time talking about what is called the metaphysical conceit. Um, sounds like a big complicated term. Let's break it down into its component parts. Let's begin with conceit. This is a, a poetic term. It doesn't mean to be conceited, um, which is what I always thought when I was studying poetry. Instead, it comes from the Italian word concetto, which means literally concept. So a conceit is the use of a series of um, metaphors and similes to develop a whole concept that you can layer onto a poem in order to create meaning from it. Um, we'll look at a specific example of this in just a minute that I think will, will help this to become a little bit clearer. Um, but we want to take the whole term, so we want to think too about the term metaphysical. Metaphysical means to be concerned with abstract thought or subjects such as existence, causality, or truth. Sounds lofty, right? And you would think that to be described as a metaphysical poet must be something important. After all, if you're a metaphysical poet, you must be concerned with all of these abstract things such as existence, causality, or truth. Well, maybe not so much. This term, metaphysical poet, comes about but from a man by the name of Samuel Johnson, and here is a famous portrait of him. Um, Johnson was not particularly flattering when he used this term to describe John Donne and some others. Rather than talking about the subject matter of their poetry as being lofty and dealing with abstract stuff, he was actually talking about the metaphors that John Donne used and making the point that they were not grounded in any kind of reality. So for Johnson to call them metaphysical poets, not really such a nice thing. He was being a little bit critical of the way that they wrote poetry. So when you hear talk about the metaphysical poets, that's where the term comes from and that's what it means. It's related very much to their use of what is called the metaphysical conceit. And I think you can probably gather from our discussion of the two terms that this is a conceit, or in other words, a layering onto a poem of a series of um, comparisons that really don't have any clear grounding in our reality, at least that we perceive. So. One of the famous examples of this is, of course, the poem, The Flea. And you can see that the whole poem is about love, but Dunn is describing it in terms of this flea this, that has bitten both the man and the woman, mingling their blood together. And the whole poem is that conceit, that concept, um, where Dunn is using, we can use the same terms that we did with metaphor here. The tenor is love, the vehicle is the flea, and John, is, John Dunn is using that to describe love. Um, and as you can see from Wolowski's discussion and from our own intuitions, this is not just a natural connection that most of us would make. Johnson would say it has no grounding in reality, thus it is a metaphysical conceit. Hope that clarifies a little bit. These are terms that are somewhat important, especially if you're thinking in terms of the history of poetry, but I thought you would want to be familiar with them.